Why couldn't we have lost the Johnny Capahala episode? Why couldn't we have lost the Johnny Tsunami episode? Why couldn't we just lose this episode, right? Why now? couldn't we have lost the whole pod? <laughs> Why couldn't I lose myself? <sighs> oh, Lucas M- Melby. <laughs> Eminem? Yeah, lose yourself yeah. in the podcast, The Princess. The of program. the Diaries. <laughs> yeah, Princess Diaries, starring Anne Hathaway and Julia Andrews. It's today's pod. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Jacob Telechuk. We're back here. It's a whole new pod. We're tired. I've, I, we're always tired. We I haven't slept since the power outage. We have the lights on in the room this time, so yeah, if the power we, goes we out, will we know. will know right away. We've recovered from the trauma of the Hashing Pete episode. Yeah, if, if you do not know what happened, if you're just catching this episode and haven't listened to our Hatching Pete episode. I guess it's possible. I think yeah. Prince's protection program is probably on more people's radar. We got than Selena Hatching Gomez. Pete. We got Demi Lovato. But what happened in Hatching Pete was we recorded, we watched and recorded, and then about 40, 50 minutes in, the power went out at yeah. Lucas's place. And my laptop is over ten years old and doesn't have a functioning battery, so that meant the the recording record stop. But we we continued to talk through it, not realizing. Yeah, we that, only lost around five minutes. Yeah, it wasn't bad. But what the bummer was was having to wait for two hour plus. Yeah, that is fucking for the power spend to come back. Unproductive time with Jacob and Dustin. <laughs> I don't. I've talked about it on the podcast. I see Jacob once every two weeks on purpose. We, we watch the movie, you know, we record an episode, and I, and it, you know, I uh, if you. If you <laughs> You watch Severance on Apple TV Plus. I block those two weeks of my I'm a different person. Jacob <laughs> Teledon does not exist within my consciousness. And then two weeks come uh, up and it's like, all right, let's do guess this I, again. Guess I need to see him. And in a way, in that show where the people's separate consciousness, Jacob, is are you aware of this show? I I've heard of it. The premise is I... that these people they work for this like weird dystopian company, pharmaceutical company or something. Yeah, they okay. have a job where once they go into a lower level of the building they work at. Their consciousness exists only there. So they have two different consciousnesses that are severed, and one only exists basically to work. Oh. Once they leave for the day, the real self gets to live in the outside world, and then oh. it's like a second passes, and then they are back there. So their existence is only working. Oh my. And sometimes I feel like my existence is only watching Disney Channel or original movies, yeah. toiling away in the DCOM mines. Uh, decommers. I don't know. Let's throw that decommers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> always be decomming. <laughs> but this episode, I liked Hatching Pete. I thought that was kind of a, a sleeper a fun, hit. Yeah, Princess Protection Program, as you said, bigger, more high-profile movie. We've got some real names, not just were they, channel names. Were they big at the time? Uh, they yep. both had shows running concurrently. Okay. They Selena Gomez was on Wizards of Waverly Place. Yeah. We'll actually get the Wizards of Waverly Place movie next, next. episode. Wow, back-to-back And Demi showings. Lovato was her show Sunny with a Chance or I, something I, like that. I, that is a show. I don't know if she was I in it. I think that was her show. I, I wasn't really watching a lot of the shows As I sometimes point. do when I'm at work, I'll look around at some of the stuff about these. And I discovered that there was some, like, we already talked about how maybe dad napped was some massive crossover movie yeah but there was actual massive crossover oh. episodes i think there was oh yeah, triple, yeah 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 there was a set of three episodes one on each different show of wizards of waverly place S- sweet, sweet life, life of zach and cody on deck okay and hannah montana i think were Whoa. the three separated out and that sounds crazy so yeah. you know the marvel cinematic universe is the big thing now but the disney channel cinematic universe that was what was up decommerce for life true always decommon uh i don't really know where i was starting with that but yeah princess protection program it's a it's a good movie yeah it's not it's no hatching fee no it's not a bad it's 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 more than it's better than boring and it's not like too crazy crazy there's some craziness to it there's some fun to it. I don't know if it's like too crazy. There's, There's fun more to like it, conceptually, it's crazy, yeah, and some yes, of the stuff that's yes. presented in the movie is being like, "Oh, this is kind of not that big of a deal." When but it's not it's like, like overwhelming. It like the movie, deal. there's not like a lot going on to where it's like over, you know, overwhelming. I guess. Let's just talk about the damn movie. Okay. We got a little fun bit at the end, so Jacob wanted me yes. to plug it early. Yeah, stick so around stick around till the end. To you maybe should a, always a segment. Probably won't be too often recurring, because it might also be kind of gross, but uh, a whole new pop, maybe? Oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, but man. Speaking of pop and Princess Protection Program, getting all the peas in there. Princess Protection Program. 
or PPP for oh, sure. Yeah, PPP. Which I, I, PPP. I, I, that's what all those loans people were talking about, right? The PPP loans. Yeah. For the Princess yeah, yeah, Protection yeah. Program. Right? Yes. Ah, uh, the kids love the government jokes, <laughs> we love and they loan, love Princess loan Protection jokes, Program. Our favorite. Yes. But kind of a surprising intro, unless you were me who read a synopsis of the movie. We get immediate uh, imagery of Louisiana, life on the bayou, kind of. Okay. All the mountains and the palm trees uh, you yes. could imagine. Well, the stock footage is probably accurate to yeah. Louisiana. Yes. What we actually see is this movie, I think, was filmed in Costa Rica. So not Utah for once. They couldn't pass Utah off as Louisiana, but they don't do a great job of passing Costa Rica off as Louisiana either. But no. they have stock footage at the start of, like, alligators, swamps, yes, maybe, like, yes. a fan boat. Or, I mean, yeah. Fan boats, I guess, are maybe more Florida. They set it up that it was believable, but, yeah, throughout the movie, and I don't Prom know if we Yeah. We're, we're not going to... I don't think we're going to mention it, but, yes. Like, like you said, this was filmed in Costa Rica. I believe so. So, yeah, but, like, you'll see mountains, you'll see palm trees, and just... It does. It looks nothing like I don't know. I've never Louisiana. been to Louisiana. It's just, uh, it's very tropical, like where they're actually filming, so. We meet our co-main character, Carter yes. Mason, played by Selena Gomez. Movie Mason. Not to be confused with Movie Mason, sorry. I deep, wish, deep cut. Wish Movie Mason was here. Rest in peace. R- true. Uh, she is working at her dad's bait shop because they're on the bayou giving out yes. some minnows or worms or Leeches live bait. Leeches and live bait. And weirdly... I wasn't paying the closest attention, but we meet Donnie, who is cool, preppy, jockey kid yes. at and, school. And Selena Gomez's character is into him. Yes, but he doesn't even know her name. Calls her bait girl. And I'm like, now that I'm thinking about this scene, it's like, I thought at first he was like getting some bait to go fishing, but actually then they're on their way to school. So I don't really know what she was doing in the bait shop, and I don't know what he was doing coming up to the counter in the bait well, shop. Well, she li- basically lives in the bait shop, right? Yeah, but I mean, if she's on her way to school, what is she doing? Like, it made it seem like she was working in the yeah, bait shop. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, but it's, yeah, oh, who she, knows? he's too who cool knows? for her, and we're getting set up that Selena Gomez somehow is, is n- like is, a, a loser at y- school. Yeah, that's if a fair classification, yes. If that's believable at all. It's not. And we, along with Donnie, we meet the other kind of cool, mean kids of the school. Chelsea, who is kind of like the co-villain of the movie with another character yeah. we'll meet in a bit. Yes. And Chelsea's mean girlfriend, mean girl, space friend. Friend. Not, not girlfriend. A friend that's a girl. Of the, yes. And they are in Donnie's convertible. And I guess we're supposed to give Carter a ride to school, but... Chelsea has dresses in the back, and so now she doesn't have a spot. For yeah. Carter so to why sit. were they giving her a ride? They're not friends. And also, it's, all the it's other times, really weird. Carter rides a bus to school. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why I, I was like, why were I they don't... there? If they don't really like her, they don't even really know her name. Were they getting bait? No, they're on their way to school, and then they leave her. Whatever the case is. I, I don't think it was planned that they were going to bring her to school. I think it was like, oh, well, you're just here. Can you just bring me to school? It's weird. But she yes. gets a ride, Carter, that is from her dad. Uh, I don't know his name. I call him dad or Major, S- secret, Major Mason. Secret agent papa. Who, yeah. We, I was kind of joking because he's got it. He has like a, a phone earpiece thing, which yeah. for 2009 was pretty cutting High edge. High tech, yeah. We're digging and that. And he was kind of talking about some stuff. And it's like, huh, is he like a secret agent? And then he gets off the phone and he's like, oh, I got to go. Carter's like, oh, man. And he's like, hey, it's just a normal, typical op. And I'm like, what the fuck? He is uh-huh. <laughs> he is some kind Black of Black ops, yes. So then it's princess time where we meet our other main character, Princess... Res- Demi Lovato. <laughs> put respect on her name, Rosalinda Maria Montoya. Wow. wow. Which I didn't catch the Montoya, but you, you feel like that's kind of like a, a given. princess bride yeah. reference then. Okay. Quickly, though, she'll have her name shortened to Rosie for reasons that I'll get into. She is the princess of Costa Luna. That's not a real place, is it? No, it is not a real place. And most people in this movie don't even seem to know it exists. So I don't know if it's kind of a... It's code. The equivalent... I mean, it's a tropical place, but it'd be like the equivalent of like a a Luxembourg or a a small place that maybe still has a monarchy, but Americans definitely wouldn't be able to pick it out on a map. True. 
Her father has recently died, who was the king. So now her mother is the queen regent, but she will be coronated as the princess to become the queen because she's the, the bloodline next in line. Yeah. But then there is a coup of sorts. This is all happening at the rehearsal for her coronation. But Yeah, then, it's a pretty wild introduction to it, this character. Like, you don't really bring her in and then all of a sudden you see like a flying sword. Oh, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. So while it's not the real coronation, there is still somebody placing the crown. Yes, on her they were head. practicing because it was a month away. They were just going through walkthroughs, I believe. And then General Magnus Kane, presumably the head of Costa Luna's military, throws a sword, very kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean style, to catch the crown before yeah. it gets put on her head. Again, it's still just a rehearsal, yes. I believe. Yes, correct. Uh, in between some of these scenes, we see Carter's dad is actually undercover here and is talking to. The queen, uh, Rosalinda's mom, yeah. and he's basically like, I'm here to protect your daughter. Hmm, what could that be about? So the general starts to basically do a coup, uh, which is kind of crazy to have depicted in a Disney Channel movie. Yeah. So, and but there's no this, guns. There's that it's one just sword. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was, and that wasn't even anybody's hand. It was just chucked across the courtyard. So then Carter's dad, Major Mason, comes to the rescue. I just keep thinking of movie Mason. This is not good. Well, you made me start <laughs> thinking of movie Mason when you were saying it so much, too. So he kind of uh, rushes Rosalinda away. They meet up with the mom, the queen, and the queen's like, you have to go with him. He's going to protect you. Yes. I don't know if they name drop the Princess Protection <laughs> Program here, but for the viewer, no, things not are until... starting to fall into place yeah. about what's going on. Yes. They get into a helicopter. As well, they're getting well, to the helicopter, yeah, well, there's guards chasing them, but they don't have guns, so it's okay. No, yeah. So they're running through the palace or whatever you want to call it, and they, and they, yeah, they, they maybe, come across. And this is some of the finer details of this high action scene for this movie. Yeah, well, they run into mom, right? And the mom's like, well, you got to go with this guy, you know, you'll be safe this way. It's very sad and emotional. Yeah, because they're separated, obviously. Like you said, she has no father, her father, papa's dead. So they've been separated, and she's like, I promise you, we will see each other again, but. You just keep you safe and me safe. You gotta go. Yeah. So it's a it's a coup, but it's very G rated. Yeah. Very decom. Yes. They get into this helicopter and they get dropped off on seemingly a deserted island that made me and Jacob immediately think of Lost because they just go into this bunker or hatch in the the middle of the island and they're taking this elevator down and for whatever reason. Uh, it seems weird that there's a big screen in the elevator because the person talking on the screen is in the base that they go down into. But yes. This is where probably where we get the first name drop of the Princess Protection Program. Rosalinda's all taken aback, like, what's going on, what this is? And we learn about then as she gets down into the base, the International Princess Protection Program, yes. which in a way is kind of a crazy concept that, again, like this coup is kind of just passed off as like, ah, oh, nonchalant, whatever. It's just a basically a mini army or special agent task force funded by 29 different royal families <laughs> to protect the princesses of the like, royal Like, thinking families. about it now, just like, we see a lot of, like, fun stuff in this you know, in the base, like, right? I, it, we it's, see lots it's, of princesses. It, it's it's cool. Like, like it almost kind of gives me... a little crazy that there's that many princesses that are under active threat at that moment that have yeah. to be moved to this base. What it reminded me of how they got into it, you know, in, like, the elevator with the TV screen thing, it kind of reminded me, like, maybe Men in Black, kind of how they go to that little warehouse to get to their little sure. secret... Sure, Men in Black as filtered through a decom with a much less... Yes. Much right? lesser budget and not the as, base? Like, cool I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. It kind of gave me those vibes. But it is this organization. <laughs> My, I, I think it was here where when they said International Princess Protection Program, Jacob went, oh my God. Because <laughs> we were like, how we many princesses need fucking protecting? It was a But lot. they actually say it's 29 princesses. Yeah. And they're all like, you know, getting their hair done, their hair did. There's so yes, the Princess Protection Program, which I guess I was maybe stupid and didn't pick up on the, the play on words of Princess Protection Program, Witness Protection Program. Oh, okay. They're picking up the princesses yeah. and yeah. hiding them from, I don't know, all of the the Coors out there. Coors, I like that. Uh, Keith Stone. Keith Keith Moon. Is that even Coors Light? I don't know. I don't drink beer. Isn't it Keith Moon? No. No, Keith I, I think it is Stone. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Not worth uh, diving into that too much. But the idea is that they pick up these princesses who are in danger and they change their hair slightly. 
give them new clothes, a new identity, and then they go into hiding until it's safe for them to return to yes. their royal families. So it's all just set up with a, a weird mercenary, shadowy task force thing. Correct. So she makes a big deal that she doesn't want her hair cut, and then she demands to talk to Major, Major Mason. Mason. Movie Mason. He's the only one she trusts, and that's Carter's dad. And she is told that her mom will be safe. This is from Carter's dad saying, like, your mom will be safe so long as you go into the princess protection. Yeah, you're only safe if she's safe. And did you mention the four different steps yet? No, I was well, because I don't. They're even, not really important. It's almost like South Park, where yeah. it's they they you know, introduce the middle it, one that's a question means, mark, and yeah. then it equals profit. So the first step is extraction. So they did that. Second step, we think is trans transition transition, which is like going on as she's going down the elevator. Maybe. And then third step, we don't know what it was. <laughs> and then fourth step is like is, reacclimation or we something. We thought it was that know? her returning home is the fourth step, but the fourth step is actually her just being let out into public to live her secret life. So yeah, it's kind of like the underpants gnomes. Yeah. Step three, question mark. Step four, profit. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's kind of weird. I was like, I, I feel like if this coup happened, they would just kill the queen. I don't think they would worry too much about the princess being yes. in hiding. She's dead, and this is a Disney So there's movie, a weird balance so. of, like, this is taking it, like, maybe a little too, like, nicely. But then the dad is also like, if he finds you, you will be put in prison or a work camp. Yeah, <laughs> So that is like a, some grittiness and reality to them being like, well, it's a coup, but it's not like a crazy coup. But also, you might be put into a work camp, which is not a, a concept not, I would think fun. talked about in a Disney Channel movie. No. So with the the gravity of the situation explained to her, she's okay with getting her hair cut off. So she had long hair before. Yeah, she needs to look, now she she needs needs to look different. she has slightly shorter hair. She doesn't really look that different. No. Then we find out that she is getting assigned to Major Mason, and he takes her home with him. So they arrive home, and Carter gets off of the school bus shortly after, sees her dad is home. This is probably when we've seen our favorite character, yeah, Dale. Gonna, yeah, toss Dale Earnhardt. Was it Dale So Duke? it was the bus driver named Helen. Yes. Who, as far as IMDb seems to say, is named Dale Dickey. That, that's is, her real name. She's a nice bus driver lady, but... I She's nice, but she looks a little Bayou-ish. <laughs> she looks, you know, it's good casting. She looks like she would live in Louisiana. But she tells Carter, it's like, oh, looks like daddy's home. So Carter's running in all excited until she runs into her room and finds Princess Well, Rosalinda. she's still even excited. She, she, like, walks into her room, and then she's, like, about to leave, right? And she's like, oh, hey. Then she's like, oh, hey. You know, I mean, it's like, one of those movie scenes yeah. of being like, oh, I'm acting like this is totally normal and not crazy. And then it hits me, and I go, but, 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 what? There's a princess in my room. <laughs> Uh, so we were learning the situation. It was kind of unclear, but I think ultimately, as the movie goes along, Carter knows what her dad does. Yeah. So he's not like a secret agent. No, but I, I would assume they've never had a princess. He's never been the one up, you know, like, oh, it's time to take a princess home. She's kind of just is kind of annoyed about the fact that Rosalind is there. They set up that her cover name is going to be Rosie Gonzalez. Rosie Posey. Which is not the best cover when her name is already Rosalinda. And then yes. associating her with a Spanish family is also probably like, could do a little more PPP. Yes, because they are, her story is she is the cousin from Iowa. Yeah, that too, that she's from Iowa. I mean, we're from Minnesota. I'm, I, there's Mexican or Hispanic immigrants that are in Minnesota that are in Iowa, but... yeah. Also, the idea that it's her cousin from Iowa and that they she's just going to start going to the same school as her. Like, that's something that definitely happens. So I moves <laughs> to Louisiana to go to school with her cousin. Yeah. Speaking of going to school, actually, before that, uh, they're going to sleep that night. And Rosalinda or Rosie thought like, oh, this is my room. Nope, we're going to share the room. Well, then you can get me ready for bed. So she's treating Carter. Give me like my a, pink nightgown or handmade, something. Handmade, and then Carter's giving her some reality and being like, bitch, we ain't doing that. Exactly. I will say, I think this role is a better fit for Demi Lovato. And you said, I don't know if we've mentioned, you said, oh, the, the role that she's in. Yeah, compared to like Camp Rock. I think she's also probably just had a little more time to develop as an actress. But she, being a fish out of water in this situation... 
uh, Jacob compared her talking to uh, the good doctor. Yeah, she, which well, is not she, something I fully She talks understood. very proper. She, yeah, she, she's kind of got a, a stilted way that she's talking. Sometimes yes. not like the most emotional. So I think that maybe benefits her not being the greatest actress. You know, she can fake cry or when yeah. it's necessary. Uh, but I think Selena Gomez, I haven't had much exposure to Selena Gomez. I watched the first couple episodes of that Hulu show she has with like Steve Martin and Martin Short. Oh, and I was like, eh, okay. Felt like they uh, misrepresented podcasts in that show. Oh, my. So that was you were, the reason. Like, offended. Out. Very offended. Oh, my. Because we don't misrepresent podcasts on our show. No, at all. we got to be real. The real deal. But I, I hadn't I gotten much exposure to her, and I liked her in this movie. I thought she was very charming. And Yeah, no. The... Well, I, don't, I do think it's a little suspension of disbelief that Carter would be like a loser and Donnie wouldn't give her the time of day or whatever. Yeah. But she plays that kind of. I saw an IMDb that apparently Selena Gomez was originally supposed to be the princess and Demi Lovato was the normal girl, but then they switched roles and that worked out better. I don't necessarily buy it, but I do buy the IMDb trivia that said that at the time they were best friends, but now their friendship has ended. Oh, man. <laughs> Which I think there's maybe some actual like gossip columns or yeah. whatever to add credibility to that. Because uh, Demi Lovato, I think, had like drug problem maybe selena gomez too uh whatever the case don't most kid actors actresses yeah, maybe or selena gomez i think she had like i don't know was it like pancreas or like spleen i don't know she had some weird surgery thing but she has like a little a little more darkness to her a little more like sarcastic edge she does lots of like yeah whatever and i think she pulls that off well whereas demi lovato i don't know she's just too too she's got a very big mouth she's very smiley oh man so. It's a little harder to buy. You're big on the big mouths, huh? No, no, I fucking hate big mouth. Oh. Big mouth. That's a good show. Netflix slashing their budgets, their animation budgets, but hey, let's get fucking eight, season eight of fucking big mouth, where the show- Nick, Nick Kroll? I can't remember freaking his Probably name. John maybe Mulaney. 20% of the budget of that show goes to the actual animation, and the other 80% John just Mulaney. goes to paying all the famous voice actors as their contracts probably get more and more expensive. True. Anyways, that was quite a long tangent that was fairly <laughs> judgmental about our two actresses with short version being sane. I Big think they're both mouth. good. I think Demi Lovato is improved, and I like Selena Gomez a lot in this role. Then it is the the next morning. They the morning kind of after, a, yeah. There's going to be... Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, what was happening there? I don't know. There's going to be a morning after... Oh, that's... I was... Something where I was about to reference it, but then I wasn't sure what it was actually from. But it's uh, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Mm. We getting wild again. <laughs> Emmett Otter, what is that from? You're, you're not familiar with Emmett Otter's I Jug Band think Christmas? So. It was a. Uh, I mean, I know I what think a it was Jug like Band when my is. My parents were growing up, maybe in like the 70s, 80s. Oh, it's it like an like older a, show. An HBO Christmas special that Jim Henson Productions made. Okay, so it has, I could see that. I think Kermit the Frog maybe introduces it, or that might be a Christmas toy, or it could be both of them. <laughs> uh, but this is princess protection program yes so rosie is at the breakfast table and she's kind of like taken aback of like this madcap breakfast that they're having where it's really fast because they're in the they're in a rush because they didn't catch the bus right i almost so thought like at a moment like the doubt is just gonna like throw a milk carton to uh or like a juice carton selena I mean, that's is kind drinking of what out happens of the milk yeah she's drinking straight out of it like lucas does straight out of the jug well, yeah, not the uh, cartons. Carton. Is, it would be a little weirder to drink out of a milk carton. I've never had an actual, like, full-size milk carton. No. Other than, you know, you get the milk cartons school. in school, but, like, yes. the ones that have the pictures of missing kids on them. I've never, <laughs> never had them. I think that's no. more maybe a thing for, like, non... The pores? Uh, no, for, like, <laughs> almond milk or oat yeah, milk, okay. stuff that's not actually milk. You said it's put plastic. In those kinds of yeah. Things. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... But then they get rushed onto the bus and we're already kind of getting the fish out of water stuff of Rosie being too formal with the bus driver. Yeah, she I can't remember how she greets herself, but But then she also doesn't sit in her seat right away and slams her face into the window. No, because the, the bus driver is. takes off. Well, yeah, because she's trying to introduce her to the bus lady in the bus lady, you know, okay, that's great. I got other stops, you know, or I'm you know, I'm late, I'm running late. But she's still nice. This is still the nice, you know, uh Dale Doug Dimadome character. We talked about earlier. And as I get off the bus, we get to meet my favorite character in the movie, or eh, kind of. Probably Selena Gomez is my favorite character. But this guy, yeah. I was very excited because I didn't know the Nicholas Braun. Minute Man himself. The Minute Man. In the Minute Men episode. 
He is our character, Cousin Greg, on Succession, which is a fantastic show. And I didn't realize he was in two Disney Channel original movies. No, neither did I. No idea. And his role is similar. We debated in Minutemen whether he was supposed to actually be cool, but then he just still came off as awkward just because of his performance. Or if he was supposed to be awkward, (laughs) but he thinks he's cool or whatever. But in this, he's definitely full-on awkward, dweeby guy. His name is Ed, and he is probably inspired slightly by, like, the American uh, American Beauty kid who, like, films the plastic bag with his camcorder. Oh. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the case, he is immediately awesome. ready to film <clears throat> Carter coming off the bus, and he's like, ooh, here comes the queen. And he's, like, really kind of creepy and be like, oh, you're so pretty, yeah. queen. And she's like, fuck off, Ed. And then Rosie comes off and he's like, oh, who is this queen, m'lady? Oh, he does oh. actually say m'lady later on in the movie. When he's putting on her ruby weird, slippers. Weird uh, scene. There's a lot of feet in this There's a fair number movie. of feet. It's, uh, it's not a Nickelodeon it's, production, though. It's not directed by Quentin Tarantino, but you might oh, you know, right. think it was. Yeah. Different feet person. I was thinking of... Uh, I can't ever remember his name. He was like the showrunner of like iCarly and stuff like that. He had he had spells of that too. That's the rumors. Okay. Uh, but he is calling Rosie a queen, and she says, "Oh, I'm not the queen yet." And she kind of is doing this whole thing of like, "Well, I'm like a princess." And then Carter's like, "Hey, shut the fuck up and don't talk to Ed." And yeah, I thought it was fun because a lot of the time, even in a movie like True Confessions, which is all about camcorder filming. Actually, I don't remember what the film stock or footage looked like in that. But this is actually like camcorder footage. It's not fake, you know, found footage movies where these camcorders yes. are movie film quality. Uh, so we get cuts to the, the footage from Ed's camera multiple times in the movie. So then they go to the first class, which is French. And Rosie tries to sit down. And then this other, the, du- the doucher kid. So Donnie from the ba- yes. has his Donnie, back turned. Donnie. And she says, may I have this seat? And without looking, he says, nah, it's just school's property. And then he turns to his bro and gives him like a handshake. And they go like, yeah, like, like a, God. They're gritting their teeth. They're uh, like, uh, like they do like a slow, like fingers touch. And they kind of yeah, like, they do kind of like, like, the, a, like snap you know, the fingers, you know, like, thing where people will be it's like, weird. Uh, it's weird. It's, like, it's, it's, mm. it's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's we're because just, it was such a great dish. Use, it's not the only time yeah. they do it in the movie. No, it happens multiple times. But then Donnie turns around and then sees, oh, Rosie is so beautiful. Oh, so then he does give her the yeah. seat. Yeah, and, and then, then he, like his bro's like, what, bro? Like, bro, bro. And he and says, says, yeah. she's hot. And yeah. he's like, fuck you. Yeah. And they do another, <laughs> Yes, exactly like that. As I said, it's French class, so the teacher's coming in and meeting the new student, and then Rosie just goes off on this whole thing where she speaks in, like, six different languages. Yeah, I think it's more than that. It's nutty. You know, like, Latin, or, like, Italian, French, Spanish. Well, the teacher asks her what all languages, and she's like, uh... Je, je suis uh, le français, le japonais, and she's just, like, saying all the different languages. And Carter is obviously not happy about this, because... There's two different things in play here. One is Carter's kind of personality and outlook, which is I don't want to draw attention to myself. And two, yeah. because of the Prince's Protection Program, don't she want to draw attention, to, draw attention to, to herself yes, to Rosie, because again, yes. her cover story is that she is from Iowa, Iowa. <laughs> but can speak farmer. all these no. these uh, languages fluently. And yeah, that gets brought back up later to Papa. Like, oh, she's ordering burgers in six different languages. She's oh, yeah, because that comes up at lunch yeah. where Donnie is kind of hitting on her, much to the chagrin of his friend because she cuts him in line. Uh, this is Rosie. He's, he's like, on. nah, bro, it's good. You come with me, Rosie Posey. And she's talking to the lunch ladies, and we later learn she's it's because speaking she always Spanish. speaks in the, the native language of her servants. What? Yeah, and like, they're not your servants. They're lunch ladies is what Carter says. But I didn't, the lunch lady didn't necessarily look Hispanic, and she's in Louisiana, so I wouldn't necessarily expect her to know Spanish, mm, no. but she does. And then she gets a burger from the lunch lady, but... She doesn't know how to eat it. She doesn't know where to sit. She well, she doesn't even know what it is. She asks something she and she's like, what is that? <laughs> she says, what is that? Oh, it's uh, mystery meat. Oh, what is this? A hamburger? And it's just, yeah, it's like a burger with tomatoes. <laughs> 
So and she sees Carter, but he's she's being like filmed by Ed, and there's other yeah, people like, like there's not a spot. And then she wanders, she walks by Carter, and then Carter kind of notices her and kind of looks sad, maybe like feeling bad for Rosie for like a uh, minute. And then she sits by herself at a table and pulls out her like napkin and spreads it out. And we see Donnie sitting by Mean Girls, Chelsea and Brooke. God, They're I... seeing this movie like, who does she think she is? A princess? Yeah. Oh, if you oh. only knew. And then she's starting to eat a burger with a knife and fork. And, you know, with sometimes those burgers, you get a burger in a restaurant. It's too damn big. You got to eat it with a knife and fork. True. You think I'm going to, like, dislocate my jaw to eat it? True. More of what off, happens to me is off, I, I pick yes. up the burger, and then I have to, it's like a big sloppy burger, and then I have to hold it in my no, hand. I, I, lo- I love me a burger. It. I love me a burger. I mean, I'll, I'll munch right into it. I don't know if I've ever cut a burger. I just kind of go no, for it. I, we used to go to a local restaurant for weekly Yes. Pub trivia. Yes. And that restaurant had like a double patty burger. And, and that one, you know, once you're getting to like that level of meat and that level of height in the burger, yes. you maybe do need to cut it. But not Fair. when you're at a, a high school and you're no, in the Princess no, Protection no, no, no. Program. So Carter comes over, tells her like the faux pas she's made, and then shows her how to actually eat a burger. Uh, Demi Lovato gets like a bunch of mustard on her face, which. Yeah, and she's like, is this, am I doing this right? And like, and then Selena responds like, yeah, but like, I think she's kind of like, this is like a moment of like, oh, she's human. Like she's eating she's a ha- burger well, or messy. Or at least that Carter's happy to like make the princess have a messy face. Yeah, a yeah. I, but I I don't think it's in like a mean, you know, like out of like, you know, like in a mean intentions. I don't know. Probably. She's she, she, She's laughing with her. Uh, and then the principal who, this principal's role, this is only related to, we think it's homecoming or some upcoming event where they're going to elect a queen. But first they need to nominate the princesses. And then there's a little joke about Rosie's like, oh, you guys vote on your queen and princesses? (laughs) And Carter has a a snide comment of being like, yeah, we're a democracy. And there are are constitutional monarchies out there, but I still don't know if they really elect the king and queen. Usually it's just bloodline. But Rosie, knowing how great it is to be a princess for most of the time, she views this as a time where she wants to do something nice for Carter to show her the princess life. Yeah. So then she stands up on a table and makes a big announcement that she is nominating her cousin Carter to be a princess. And this is mortifying for Carter. And she runs out. Again, doesn't want the attention on either of them. Chelsea and Brooke are like the mean girls who Chelsea is very much committed. She wants to become the queen and she also wants her yes. friend to be a princess. Yes. But it seems to be more that she wants her to be a princess just so then, I don't know, her friend will not, like, run or something. Yeah, yeah. She'll fall, if she wins, she falls down like the, the finger poke of doom in WCW. So, yeah, so it's kind of like you just you have enough people out there where the votes are mainly going to you, but these other two kind of separate, you know, take away some of the votes from each other. But maybe. the way the scenes are cut, Carter runs out, Rosie follows after her, and then they cut to them back at home. You know, Rosie's catching up to her. So it makes it seem like Carter ran up ran in the, the middle of home. the school day all the way yes. home. <laughs> which which the we, bus. yeah, as I said, which we saw them take a bus. So she's kind of blowing up at Rosie and her dad being like, she's embarrassing me. She's doing all this stuff. She can't do it. She can't pretend to be normal. She was eating a, a fucking burger with a, a fork <laughs> and knife, dad. She sucks. Calling people peasants and, and then what have you. She doesn't call people peasants. Yeah. She's a, a she benevolent said li- like monarch. a peasant. She she says Marna. peasant at some point. Well, Carter says she's living the peasant life. Mm. I think that's maybe what you're thinking of. But that night we see Rosie up late and she's crying. Yeah, looking Mrs. at a locket of her mama mom and papa and dead dead and dad, dad her dead dead dad dead 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 dad. Speaking dead, dad. of which, no mom for Carter. No. And the scene coming up, I thought there was going to be more about a potential dead mom. But there's not. You know what might happen? Spoiler alert. There is a sequel to this. Not a movie, but a book where Carter. I can't. <laughs> no, where Carter goes to where Rosie lives. Coast to Luna. And I'm wondering if maybe the two parents, you know, hook up. They are together at the very end of the movie. So. Whatever the case is, right now, Carter, the next day, is running the bait shop and rosie checks in and it's like oh what are you doing and carter's like oh, i'm doing some chores and rosie's like what are chores yes she is what like, is kiss <laughs> <laughs> i 
Exactly. And again, as of why I was thinking the mustard stuff is maybe Carter being a little mean. And then she says, oh, you want to help out with chores? Here, you can do some inventory. That means you just count everything in this bucket to see how many there are. And then I'm going to go paint a boat with my dad. What is she counting, though? Worms. The worms. Oh, it's so yeah. gross. And then there's a full shelf of worms she has to count. And then she's climbing up to the top of the shelf. She's, and she yeah, knocks she's it over. climbing the shelf. And it, I All don't know, the worms falls get on, on Rosie. Her. And then the dad and Carter I need rush to in. go shower. Bathe. I must bathe. I must bathe. What is Phil? <laughs> I thought it was going to be a really stupid the thing. Dad the dad was going to get really mad at her. Get mad at Selena but and being like, doesn't. how could you do this? But that doesn't happen. And she's like, it was kind of funny, right? He, he's he's, like, yeah, he's yeah, laughing his ass off. It's pretty good. It's he's, pretty good. He's busting the gut. Yeah, it, it was funny. Yeah. Uh, to apologize then for, I guess, knocking all the worms over, Rosie cooks them a meal. And yeah, has like a whole spread for them. And she made them like Lay's, not Lay's, made them... Uh, she made them Lay's potato chips. <laughs> yeah, they got weird like midsummer, like... Uh, Browns, the, the movie I don't know. Flower Tiaras, yeah, whatever you want to call them. And Carter makes a comment about the dishes being like... Mom's dishes? She just dishes. says, like, I haven't seen those for a while. I think it's more because then the dad's like, oh, I haven't cooked a meal forever. Yeah. They I, like order pizza and stuff. I thought you were kind of right on the path. Like, oh, those are mom's. You know, exactly. we shouldn't have used those. So, I, Which they, I guess is fine because be, that felt to me like the predictable Disney yeah, Channel route. They could have created tension like that. Yeah, you're using mom's stuff. We, you know, we can't. I mean, that has happened in other But they decons. created tension in a different way because the dad's talking about how great the food is. And then Carter, my interpretation was that. She was getting mad at Rosie because yes, uh, Carter's more as, you know, she works in the bait shop. She's fine with getting dirty. She's more of a Tom girl, whereas Rosie's obviously this prime proper princess and that she's maybe being more of like typical daughter things of like cooking for her dad. Yeah. So she says, oh, must feel fun being peasant for a day or whatever. Yikes. Yes. Storms off again. And I can relate to feeling one up by uh, somebody, wow. somebody's friend. Uh, this episode, I feel like, is going to be a long one anyways. But tangent real quick. Oh, no. I think it was, at, yeah, it was after I had graduated college. And I moved back in with my parents. My brother was also living there. And my brother, we both worked at the same grocery store. I worked in the kitchen there. He worked in night stock. It's relevant. I was getting okay. a new job. So I had taken a week off. Just I had a week in between the new jobs. So it was like, you know, after graduating and going back to my summer job, it's like, oh, I'll finally get like a little bit of a break between I start this new yeah. job. Well, yeah. my brother, Brody. Oh, no. Jacob knows him. He's a nice guy. Yeah. He the con goblin. uses the term friend often. He has many friends. I would argue he uses the term friend <laughs> too liberally. For anyone uh, he's ever talked to. One of his friends to. came and asked uh, a favor. I don't even remember this guy's name. I, at the time, I had never even heard my brother mention this guy. And he hasn't mentioned him really since, but <laughs> this guy had something going on where he like broke up with his girlfriend and didn't have a place to stay oh, or something. I so can't remember this. My brother asked my parents if he could stay there with us. Maybe this will make me sound like a stick in the mud or a petty person, but I think that's already become clear <laughs> on this podcast. But it was my one, like it was perfectly lined up Your with my one, one week, week break between yes. these two jobs. Correct. And Brody worked night stock. So he would often be gone at night yeah. and sleep during the day. So then his friend who didn't have, like, he wasn't currently working. Oh, God. And he didn't really have anything to do. And Brody wasn't freaking doing anything with him. And, like, our dogs would be barking at him. He was sleeping down in the basement where I would often play video games. And I couldn't play oh, video no. games then. Everybody in the house would kind of live in our, our daily lives. But we got this stranger there. My mom is out in the backyard weeding and stuff. And then he's trying to like help her weed and it's like oh man a my mom was like I, that's kind of my me time i don't really want him yeah. to do this and b i'm talking to brody i'm like you gotta fucking rein this guy in he's making us look bad he's helping <laughs> i don't help my mom weed he shouldn't be helping him her weed either he like fixed my bike chain or something and i'm like my bike was fine oh, dude like, man. and my dad's like oh yeah go check out with him he's working on your bike and i'm like i don't want to have any part of oh, this no. and, and like basically brody was just like absent the whole time and i'm an anxious person so i'm just like stressing out about this guy and like the dogs because our dogs weren't the most friendly they're were barking at him yeah. 
and he was telling my he was unloading on my mom about like his girlfriend and like all this drama stuff too and at the end i think my parents gave him like i don't know some money too i don't think it was like a ton of money but it was like some money as like they like left and as i said never seen this motherfucker since yeah Uh, that's weird so i can understand bringing it back to the princess protection program the movie the decom we're talking about yes i can relate to somebody seeming like a better uh child than me trying to upstage me i already got to deal with my two brothers i'm pretty sure my parents like them more than me i don't need some random outsider upstaging me too true preach lucas preach. i'm a brat that's my that's my style you're a brat you know i'm not a perfect son like jacob <laughs> <laughs> can't all be uh, i can't even say that with a straight <laughs> So Rosie gets upset after being, you know, basically sounding like she's just cosplaying, living the simple life for yes. a bit. I think me and Jacob were having a stupid conversation about Wordle. We're still talking about Wordle. Oh, Nobody we probably plays shit. Wordle anymore, but I completely didn't hear what was really being talked about here. The two girls eventually make up, though. Uh, Rosie commits to trying to try extra hard to be normal. Yes. And what's the best way to show your normalcy? Roll on up to the bowling alley where all the cool kids are at. One of the strangest parts of this movie is they open it up and Rosie immediately goes, what is this? I love this place. (laughs) Which I don't think anybody who would see a bowling alley for the first time, I don't think anybody could see any bowling alley and be like, this is amazing. Like, like I I could see if you were going to, say you were to go to like a a, a midnight one, you know, where it's like cosmic Cosmic bowling bowling. or, you know, something where it's not just like I don't know, there's still like the weird carpeting, you know, weird smell in the air. It's probably a former like smoking was allowed inside place, you know, sticky floors Black car lungs associated with, like maybe her thing is just a lot of people. Maybe she just likes people and the noise. I guess, I, who knows? Well, I love this place who because knows? Ed works there. What if this is where Alley Cat Strike was filmed? It was. <laughs> uh, but Ed is working there, and he's he's like, "Oh, hello, Carter. Let me, milady. Let me get yeah. you your shoes." And then he asks Rosie what her size is, and she's like, "Oh, I don't know. All my shoes are custom made for me." So then Carter's just like, just give her some fucking shoes. Yes, but... Then, yeah, you you go ahead and take But But uh, while he's looking for these shoes, um, and he, he just picks out a pair of shoes, he turns around and she, the she's princess like herself... On a, a she's counter. It she's so sitting on the up. counter, yes. And she's like dangling her feet out. And he like comes around. He's like, oh, my my, my lady. And he like yeah, gets he down on his... he actually says my lady. Yeah. I, I don't know if he says situation. queen or princess. He like says other like kind of like royalty terms. I don't remember exactly yeah, what it you was. Know, he like holds one of the feet up and like sniffs her <laughs> toes. Dude, like, for real. <laughs> mm, yes, my lady. <laughs> it was weird because he is. He's like putting them on like they were like ruby, you know, like the slippers and the whatever. Glass slippers and the, yes, the ruby glass slippers. Yes, the ruby slippers. That's Wizard of Oz. Yes, like there were the glass slippers. It is weird, and everybody's like watching this. Like the popular girls are watching this and like yeah. Chelsea the? then sticks out her shoe. Why does nobody ever do this for us? And then a guy. Just walks by and is like, uh, your shoe's untied. Yes. And Carter's like, the fuck? Yeah. You know. So Carter, starting to be mortified again, tells Rosie, just so act normal. Is is this the first foot thing in the movie? Probably not. Uh. Yeah. There, there's you know, stuff sorry, I'm not keeping that. a running inventory of all the feet I see. Well, like, it, it becomes really apparent after this. So Carter tells Rosie to act normal, but Rosie seemingly or maybe she just loved the bowling alley because she goes bowling all the time because she fucking gets a, bowls maybe a 300 game. who knows yeah like they set it up for we like see a at least game. five or six strikes that it's, she it's rolls. pretty impressive so then all that. as all towns are all the cool kids go to the bowling alley They're all everybody's there uh what, tossing what's these rocks the, the new york kid i can't Donnie. I, donnie's there donnie's freaking out he's he's doing more high fives with his boys yeah, they actually Dude. are. Like, yeah. yeah, another strike. Turkey. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. so there's this big crowd surrounding her, and Carter just fucks like, She's like, she, yeah, she, she talks to, uh, what's his name? Yeah, she hands her shoes in, and then she's talking to Ed. And, Ed, and she's saying, yeah, my lane's just getting too, you know, too crowded. I gotta get out of here. So does she just leave her there? I, I don't think we really get a resolution no. to the end so of the I, scene. I, I guess she just leaves her there. So. Ed's kind of like, I get the feeling you don't like your cousin very much. Yeah, you don't say. Uh, and the, the main thing here is that Chelsea and her friend Brooke, the mean girls who want to be queen, or at least Chelsea wants to be queen, they're feeling threatened because this girl's so pretty, she's popular because she can bowl yeah. so well. We gotta do something about this. Yes. 
The next day, Carter's trying to work in the bait shop and Rosie's like all on her. And Carter's like, hey, just give me some space. Working in the bait shop's my thing. If you want to work, go get your own job. Chelsea, mean girl, puts on the benevolent look uh, and gives Rosie a job at her dad's frozen yogurt shop. Correct. We do not get to see this dad, uh, and we don't no, see anybody and, else and working we, in this frozen yogurt shop. There definitely should have been some kind of um, punishment or some kind of something should have came out of what's about to come. I'll say that. Lots coming here. Yogurt. So much coming. <laughs> uh, so she just gives uh, Rosie a really quick rundown and be like, oh, yeah, here's the machines. You just pump out some yogurt, and then, yeah, that's it. And it's like, uh, I think she probably has to run a cash register, too. Yeah. At the very like, least. She's the only one there. They're literally she's sitting... She's the only o- person working. They're sitting outside with their feet in the air, no socks or Very once upon sandals. a time in Hollywood, kind of. Thing. Yes. Some Margot Robbie-esque Quentin Tarantino and stuff. And then I get the impression that then uh, Chelsea leaves the yogurt shop to then just tell everybody to come get frozen yogurt or something. Yeah, she sends out text messages. The, they're sitting mom. in the car the whole time. They're sitting with, I don't know if Donnie was there. And he then, eventually shows. Them. Yeah, so like they're all there just sitting in the car watching people show up as she's trying to figure out the machine. And hilarity ensues. She's It's bad. We were questioning whether you really go to frozen yogurt shops and get cones, but she's trying to get all these cones. Yeah, and it's up. always the same pink yogurt. I mean, I kind of look good. You know, I don't know. Uh, I'm not a big strawberry, strawberry fan, guy. Or not of ice cream. Style. More for me. Less for the... Yeah. yeah. Right, what the fuck? Okay. Yep. Uh, yes. But yeah, so she's filling up these ice cream cones. She's just like overflowing them. She's picking up the, the yogurt with her fucking hands. So she, much... she tries catching it in her mouth, doesn't she, at one point? <laughs> she's like, I just can't. This is just too much. Uh, and then... It's all over Chelsea her face. Chelsea tells Donnie's friend, go do something, fuck this up even worse. Yeah, she says, it's a big red button. That's what you kind of hear. Because Donnie actually shows up and he's like, okay, come on, Chelsea. This is kind of enough. Because everybody's yelling at her, being like, I want my fucking yogurt! What the <laughs> but, fuck's and, going and on? And they're all recording her, too. Yeah, they start filming her, taking pictures on their phones. This kid sneaks in the back, and apparently these machines just have, like, buttons that are, like, uh, clean them, but if you press them when there's the yogurt in them, then they just start oozing out. out <laughs> like I, all of their orifices. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like the one was, I think, blue. I think the one was. So like, yeah, blue here yogurt. then she's just like filling up bowls, maybe filling up her mouth again. Dude, she didn't get dirty enough, wild. and I was like, Camp Rock. The image that stuck with me so much, the image the flower that face. we did for our thumbnail, for the white the YouTube face video, is her face covered in flower yeah she should be committed i feel she does fall she does slip but we don't get a a nickelodeon gack slime no it's not all over her face but she does slip and it's all over like her back and it's all over like her rest of her body (laughs) oh wow you crank that yogurt machine okay but then uh yeah everybody's filming taking pictures chelsea uh sorry carter got their 2009 Camera phones out, flip phone. I mean, uh, 2008. Think, they do drop a year in here. Remember when they're crowning? I think the first iPhone would have been out by then. So yeah, so, probably wouldn't be widespread flip phone, with this flip Louisiana phone. Bayou town. It was a flip phone cam. Uh, but then Carter and Ed come to her rescue. But it's already the damage has been done. Everybody yeah. hates her and thinks she's a loser. <laughs> but no, that's not the case. Because when they, I think you were going to the bathroom here. So when you're going to the bathroom, they walk her out and Carter smashes a ice cream cone on top of the one guy's, not Donnie's, but the guy's head, and he just goes off, you know, kind of Because, yeah, crying. Carter did see him leaving the kitchen. Yes, and she has, like, a, a cow hat on. It was a cute hat. Yes, and Carter takes the hat off her and gives it to whoever's dad it was. Chelsea. Chelsea's gives it to Chelsea, and, like, there's something where... Chelsea's talking to her friend, and they're kind of saying, oh, you know, everybody's kind of talking, you know, how they well, feel bad for about it. pointing her. out that I was in the bathroom, so I missed it, and out here, you don't even remember what happened. Well, I'm trying to, you know, remember the best I can. <laughs> so, but yeah, so she's talking, Chelsea's talking to her friend and saying, yeah, well, now people kind of, like, feel bad for her, so I don't know. All right. Uh, I'll keep it in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was very relevant. So this is where people start to like her now. They're, they're, oh, they liked her before. Well, yes, but, like, their, their plan here was to make her kind of, like, goofy and, like, you know, to laugh at her, but people end up, you know, I mean, they laugh at her, but they feel bad for her. So they like her even more. So it goes against their plan. They love to hate her. Yeah. She's bad, but she kind of makes you feel good. Oh, oh man. You know, it's frozen yogurt. It's like, it's not good for you, but it's not as bad for you either. That's true. So Rosie continues to be shown how to be normal. and what What is normal? What is 
burp. Uh, burp. They are drinking some soda pop and they giggle. <laughs> she burps. And, you know that did something for somebody out there. <laughs> y- you? No. Oh, okay. 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 All this projection onto me from Jacob Telegon well, all the time. Well. We haven't brought them up, but as the movies progressed, there's been different check-ins. Because remember Costa Luna? There was a military oh, coup there. Yeah, that So we have seen happening. some cutbacks of, like, the queen being and like, I, you know, it's kind of like a Nala Scar situation in The Lion King. Where yeah, like, I will not fair. answer to you, Major Kane or... General Citizen Kane, Kane. Or yeah. Yeah, Citizen Kane. <laughs> it doesn't matter much. It will become relevant towards the end of the movie. The princesses, the candidates, the nominations, essentially... Most of the time, these would be nominations. They wouldn't be referred to as princesses in most schools. Not all these are school. But there's only Queens, three of them. right? Oh, I, I see. I, like yeah, I said, there's I, the I, candidates, and then there's yes. only one queen. Correct. Uh, so first off is Chelsea. Yes. No surprise there. Carter, big surprise, is the second uh, princess. And then final, she's the princess in all yeah. of our hearts. And in this movie, it's Princess Rosie. Yeah. So Chelsea is mad at her friend Brooke. I mean, like, why weren't you nominated? And apparently they executed this plan after the yogurt thing. They were going to send out all these text messages that said, you know, only vote for Carter. Not they, Rosie. Yes, they didn't want people to vote for Rosie because they thought that, you know, Rosie now after this stunt at the yogurt shop would get all these, you know, sympathy So then it votes. sounds like people voted for Carter and Rosie. So I'm like, how many people can they vote for? Is this is this like a ranked voting well, situation? Well, or, or, or people just voting? yeah, we'll say like 33 percent of people voted for Carter, 33 percent of voted for what you know, kind of like that maybe. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. But I feel like they could have talked about their plan a little bit more for it to seem like more of like a crazy outcome because it's just yeah. like we don't know what the fuck happened, but sure, Carter gets picked. So that's a uh, it's a fun little thing, but not for Carter because she's mortified, no. terrified. Uh, so she runs out, I think, again. Uh, but Rosie's like, hey, you've shown me how to be normal. Now it's my turn. I'm going to show you how to be a princess. Yes. It's montage time. Yes. We get uh, set to some Demi Lovato song. And then part of this montage, there's stuff of like, walk, walk around with the book on your head. But then classic montage moment. We're seeing Selena Gomez trying a bunch of different dresses. That or maybe at a, a dress shop or a thrift shop. A thrift it's hard shop. to tell because there's a bunch of old ladies. It's it's there. great though. The old ladies are great. They're like laughing and shaking their heads no and stuff as Even they're high trying. High fives. On. They're like yeah. yeah. Mm. The, say yes to the dress. Yes to the dress. And it, she picks it, it out was a, a fun nice scene. Dress. That, that was probably like granted it only lasts like twenty thirty seconds, but that was probably my that favorite was your scene. Highlight. That might have been my, my favorite scene. I mean, it's hard to top a, a wardrobe changing montage. It is. You know? We we get them. Um, we got Lindsay Lohan. We didn't got we Dunstan in? checks in. Yeah. Pinnacle. Of that. Oh, 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 we've definitely had them. I think we've had it in Twitches, right? Uh, Lindsay oh, yeah. Lohan. I mean, it happened, we had it in the color of friendship. Yeah, that is true. With that the was the most Disney stuff. Channel moment of that movie. Yeah. Also, I think this montage is showing them kind of befriending a greater group of girls. Oh yes, like they're. I thought they're, it was maybe them just trying to get votes for Chelsea well, or maybe, Carter or whatever. Maybe, maybe they are. But then it kind of plays into a plan later on. They didn't even really have an awareness of what was happening yet. Yeah. I don't. It's weird. Something that I kind of was wondering since her disguise was really not a disguise at all. That well, a haircut, couldn't somebody right? know who she is as a princess? Well, they, they. Well, there's a really contrived way this happens, but cutting to it. Chelsea's friend Brooke sees in a Spanish language magazine about Princess Rosalinda of uh, Costa Luna. Yes. So then they go, they talk to Rosie, call her out and be like, hey, if, if you don't back out of this race or whatever, we'll tell everybody you're a princess. Yeah. So essentially, I don't know. They get the dresses because Rosie also had a dress and then Carter's dress and they just throw them in a puddle, and then drive away in Carter. Yeah, and like, they really are some bitches. So mean. Yeah, I don't, I don't like them. We're not supposed to like them. Carter's dad also hears from PPP, Princess Protection Program, PPP. that the dictator is saying he's going to marry the queen, but then he's like, wait, she wouldn't do that. And then they're like, we know, but we can't let Princess Rosie learn because then she'll try to go back to Costa Luna. And it's like, well, why don't you just tell her and that her mom wouldn't marry the dictator? I True. don't know. And I don't really fully understand what happens here because 
Carter's kind of mad at Rosie being like, why did you let them get our dresses? And then Rosie says, I think it was something in the magazine that Rosie's like, well, I have to go back to Costa Luna now. Then this sets into motion something that was like a secret plan that we didn't really quite know that it was fully planned until closer to the end of the movie. But somehow, whether it's from Rosie's phone or not, Carter calls one of my favorite characters of the movie, Senor Elegante. <laughs> Love that. Who, as you maybe could guess from his name, is coded as a homosexual. Yeah. And is like the dressmaker for Rosie in the royal family. Yes. So Carter asks for him to mail them two dresses. And one's blue and the other will be pink. And Carter tells, I think, her, uh, Rosie, that. But we see Senor Elegante tell the dictator that they're in Louisiana then. Yes. This is not a betrayal. I'll just say that up front now. This was apparently a part of a plan that they had concocted to lure the dictator out into the bayou. Yes. Jacob is doing the classic. Mm -hmm. One word. Yes. Correct. You getting some good stuff? Making some good yeah. buys there? Some good monies. Yeah. Some some good doage. Good bets going on. Yeah. Not a problem, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he has his phone and laptop set up in front of him. The right? laptop not is not a problem. The laptop has not been used other than for to tell you that there's a sequel <laughs> to <laughs> the uh, the book. book. Yeah, the book. I'd rather you be looking up NFTs. Okay, okay. let's go. We're into NFT shopping. I don't know. This movie, it's like, okay, whatever. We let's get to this big the big, the, big, the big dance. The big dance. Yeah, the big dance. Yeah, so th they got the dresses on the way. They get the dresses, and then they get dressed up. And they're assisted in getting dressed up by Helen, the bus driver. Yeah. And then also drops them all off at the dance in the school bus, which is a small bus because it's a small school, I guess, or it's the bayou. Uh, and it's this big parade of girls walking out in masks. They all have masks on. Why is that? It's not because it's like a weird like sex cult thing. <laughs> it's, I mean, though uh, Ed and Donnie are super into all of the girls. Yes. Ed with his slick back hair that looks horrible. Yeah, I at first I didn't I didn't catch it was him. I had to see it in the second time. Like, okay, this is weird. But the masks, it's all part of the plan, baby. Yeah. Uh, Danny and oh, here are my notes. Danny, uh, sorry, not Danny. Donnie and Ed are like creaming their pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good note. Donnie asks Carter to dance with him, and she's for a moment, she's like, "Oh, this is what I've always wanted." She yeah. talked about this to like Rosie before, but then she lets go of his hand and says, "You didn't even know my name until I yeah, put on you this called dress. me bait, bait girl. I was nobody until I put the mask on." Yeah. I was born in the darkness. I was yes. born in the bayou. <laughs> I was my bayou, bayou Bane. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, "Yay, Carter! You recognize yeah. that Donnie sucks." Is it? But also, she doesn't dance. Does she? I don't think she dances with Ed. No, they're her and Ed never like. Ed gets duckied in this. Yeah, her and Ed never like they they kind of introduce it like it's gonna be yeah, a, a boy a movie at the end but like it, it really isn't like focused on boys right it's, this it's is one of those situations on, you know, where i kind of like check out in a second because i'm like oh the way this is gonna go is like yeah she'll dance with ed yeah she'll win queen nope both of those things don't happen. no yeah like carter kind of gets snuffed in a scene very similar to oh what was it i think it was probably high school musical too where like sharpay's friends tell her to fuck off or whatever or, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's about to sing. She's about to do, like, a singing thing, and her friends yeah, all leave her. I think her. there was, like, another movie, too, and I can't remember. It happens a lot. So Chelsea's friend, Brooke, is like, you're too mean to me. Fuck you. I'm not going to give you my lip gloss. And she's like, Brookie. And she's like, don't call me that. I'm not Brookie. So then Chelsea's kind of storming off, and she crosses paths with the dictator guy, who's like, yo, I'm in yeah, Louisiana. Like, what are you? Are you the, uh, are you our security? I'll make sure nobody else gets in here. It was really easy for him to just get into the United yes. States. Yes, and he's like, yes, yes, lady, I will protect you, here to protect and serve. So it's close to the time where and they're like, going to reveal what, the queen what is. What I thought was always goofy, and I mean, it is to just, like, 
kids are supposed to be watching this, you know, but they always have this dude in his like weird, you know, like his cape thing and all of his like weird, you know. Yeah, they do make his, a big deal about the cape. Yeah, like the beret on and like the I mean, sash. He's just all decked out. I don't know if he has a sword with him. He probably does. Dictators can be I don't know all how about get, the pageantry. I don't know how he got his sword through the customs, but he did. Well, I think they took, it's implied they took a helicopter. Oh, yeah. Though somehow that helicopter gets taken over. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, they're about to reveal who the queen is, but then Carter... Who this is a part, what was part of the plan? The masks, all the masks. She's wearing a blue dress, but oh yes, yes El yes, Señor yes. Elegante tells the dictator Midnight Blue that or Rosie something. will be in the blue dress. Yes. So they have the masks on. So then the dictator mistakes Carter for Rosie, correct, and kidnaps her. And Carter plays along and doesn't say anything. What was this great plan that then she would actually be kidnapped and brought back to? Uh, Costa Luna, well, I guess actually there's a little bit, uh, it's not a great plan. It, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen for this to go right. But Correct. she gets carted off, and then the principal hops up and announces that Rosie, Rosie is the wins. Queen. Woohoo. I'm like, and what the fuck? She's already a princess. She's going to become queen at the yeah. end of the movie. I, I don't know. That was kind of a weird, like like you said, I thought it should have been Carter. It should have been Carter. She, and then everybody like, oh, where is she, though? But then, then, then I don't want to lie to that. And I would have created a whole thing like, her oh, where is she? would be that she's happy to like recognize that people like her. She's coming out of the shadows into the spotlight and being more comfortable with herself. But no, she gets kidnapped. Yes. Uh, Rosie is up on stage. She gives an emotional speech about, oh, the real princesses were the friends who made along the way. Yeah. You're all princesses to me. She's, Especially I, I, Carter. Where is Carter? Where is Carter? Where is, where is Carter? Uh, so Rosie's going out to try to find Carter and does. But actually on the way there, she gets confronted by Chelsea, who's like, give me my fucking crown. <laughs> but she's already wearing a crown because when they were princesses, they got crowns. So it's like, what the, what, yes. what's the big deal here? They're right by a pool, and somehow Chelsea falls into the pool. I don't really know what happened. She's all wet. Her mascara is is whatever, you know, drooping off her face. And Smells. Rosie catches up to the kidnappers who are about to go into a helicopter. Helicopter, yeah. And then, bam, out of the helicopter. It's a PPP, Papa. bitch. Po, po, po. Yeah, it's Papa and the one girl we saw at we the... We didn't even ever mention the head no. of, like, the PPP. The, we, we see her on a big screen. We it's see her at she the has a agency. Russian accent. Yes. And obviously, uh, the Romanovs were very famously killed as the final Russian wow. royal family during the Bolshevik Revolution. Wow. Or maybe Anastasia did survive. Who knows? Rasputin we'll apparently... Know. Giant penis. Rasputin. But this was apparently also part of the plan is that without actually telling the dad about all this that was happening, the dad was notified about this Louisiana plot by the PPP. Correct. But Carter didn't tell him. And Carter's just like, oh, I just knew you would come. And like the dad doesn't get too mad at her. Then It's silly. But what's sillier is actually they don't immediately capture the dictator. We get a scene of him running away into the school he looks behind him, thinks that there's nobody there. He laughs to himself and immediately gets tackled. Then yeah, he gets like that. he gets speared. He gets Goldberg speared by Movie Mason from the back, so you know, yeah. extra dangerous. Yeah, and that was probably our biggest laugh in the movie. Yeah, we we even debated about making that the uh, image for. Oh, the, we we you find me that I picture. Threw the you idea can send out. me that picture. I then threw I'll the idea out, <laughs> but like I, I agreed with you, it'll be it'll be too blurry. No, I just don't want to have to go through and reload it on Disney Plus and take a screenshot. Fair. Rosie does give Carter the crown, so she's the real... That she needs it more than I do anyways. But then wet Chelsea runs up and grabs it and then runs away. Oh, yeah, And that's yes. when she Chelsea says, says she needs Carter it. goes, eh, yes. she needs it more than me anyways, which is yeah. very Carter to say. That's so Carter. We don't, yeah, that's so Raven. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we get a little bit dad being like, hey, Carter, this is pretty fucking stupid. And she's like, but I knew you'd come. Oh, okay. It was pretty funny. Yeah. And it's like, whatever. Oh, yeah. She says, you rescue princesses. That's what you do. Yeah. It'd be pretty bad if he fucked PPP. this up when he was so is, Princess Rosalinda. So does Carter become an agent now after this movie? Or after this event? I don't know. You do some work. Read I'll have that to book, read. I, yeah, I'll have to Give read the... Give us a book the, report. Uh, the sequel. So then, uh, the final scene, we see the coronation of Princess Rosalinda. Yes. There in the audience. Well, we see Carter's dad by the queen, or the queen regent, Rosalinda's mom. 
But then in the audience, we see Ed and Carter. So maybe, maybe something's something going, going on. Going on, yeah. And they yell out, "Long live Queen Rosie!" Yes, and long they get live Queen Rosie. By Rosie's mom be like, "That's not how you say it." And they say she something in, in Spanish. Spanish. To yes, be like, long live. Long Queen live Rosalinda. Queen Rosalinda. Da, 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 and then everybody da, 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 da. cheers that and it's all like... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and that's the end the of end. the movie. The end. No bloopers, no fun no freeze slow-mo. frames. Yeah, yeah. no, like, they no, just, she throws the crown up in the end. No, she just, she gets crowned and she just walks through her peasants. That's the end. It's over. That's, that's a wrap. That's, the rear end. That's the PPP, the Princess Protection Program. And I would say pretty good. Uh, as far as some Better of like, than the average. bigger, more high-profile ones we got, that obviously this one, as most Disney Channel movies, are more targeted at a young female audience. Yeah. That we are not. But I thought there was still uh, enough fun stuff in there, and I, th- I think a lot of it goes to Selena Gomez. I like her, her edgy, sarcastic yeah. character. No, yeah, she definitely plays like a... Sarcastic, yeah, you can. I mean, that uh, that is what she is. And I did enjoy, while obviously it was very silly, but just the idea of being like, "Here, we're showing a military coup of this country," <laughs> and talking about how uh, there's a risk of Demi Lovato going into a forced work camp or whatever. Yes, I want to see that alternate universe? Maybe, maybe they talk about that. Didn't in royalty think we get uncovered. that in a, a Disney in Channel sequel. original movie? It's a it's a mid movie, nothing nothing great. Yeah, not, no, it's it, not it wasn't boring, not a no, didn't drag. No, it was it was good. It was a good fun time. And we got some surprise Nicholas Braun showing. Yeah, up. you love that. You love Nicholas well, Braun. Well, we saw the opening credits, and I'm like Nicholas Braun, six six foot seven, all of them, every inch. Yeah, and Demi, uh, well, both Demi Lovato and five Selena two Gomez, very small. Five two with a uh, small five and a half shoes that there's like a I don't know blooper about. <laughs> There's a there's a thing there was a goof where they're in the bowling alley and they ask Ed for five and a half shoes and Ed gives them sevens. Wonderful, we got them, <laughs> we got them. Big goof there. So that was, as I said, Princess Protection Program. Big question though, could uh, the context? I guess would it be Princess Rosie and Carter? Could they have stopped nine eleven? My question is. Is if there was a princess on one of the three planes, oh, with the princess protection program, then have Stop, stopped, yeah, at least one of them, yeah. Maybe that should have been the play: is have a princess <laughs> on each plane, yeah, and then they save the day. That I agree with. I don't know what somebody actually had to infiltrate Al Qaeda <laughs> completely, you know, like a sleeper cell, just to save any potential princesses on the planes. Wow. Since there was no princesses, then they just they let them crash. The Yikes. You know, it's that I, dark money that's funding the Princess Protection <laughs> Program. We don't know what's going on. If there were princesses on it, I do believe the PPP would save them. But if this was before after Rosie went through her transition, I, I think they would have crashed. But after, maybe Rosie's a little bit more, you know, like assertive and, you know, maybe more call to action. And, you know, maybe maybe they stop it. Selena Gomez definitely would have stopped it, you know. Demi, sure. Demi, Demi, not before, Whatever. but after. I, I haven't been listening. I'm, I'm <laughs> blank staring at this right y- now. You're thinking about what's about to come uh, here. Yes, we're getting to oh, our God. new segment. It won't be a weekly segment, but maybe we'll recur it at times. Oh, I'm uh, not, I don't want to do this. Dropped it a little bit earlier of a whole new pop. I like that, though. We need to do it all the time. Which is like the name. Uh, a segment where we will taste different ne- beverages. Like bad. And I am one known to always be, what's what's the flavor of the summer? What's oh, the song Lord. of the summer? Mountain Dew always introduces new flavors, and I'm yes. always there to at least give them a shot, no matter how weird they are. Oh, boy. Around the holidays, they released, like, a gingerbread one. Ugh. It wasn't horrible, but it was just like, why would you do this? Who did you do this for? So I have in my hands a bottle of Mountain Dew Flaming Hot. I'm not, they sell uh, these also in twelve packs, and I was like, "That's I'm not too much. That's too much of that's a eleven and three fourths bottles that are getting dumped down the drain." So, but what if you actually it like this? Dew with a blast of heat and citrus. Yeah, it has a lime on it, so that's probably the citrus part, and it yes. also has a little cartoon flaming guy holding a lit match. Fuck, it very much looks like the guy, the mascot of like the old flaming hot Cheetos bags. And next to him it says a caution, flame and hot. I do not like hot stuff at all. I don't know. I don't know if you do. I will. 
yeah, I can I can mess around with it. So I'm going to I, yeah. open this on the mic and get some bad ASMR sounds, probably. I hope so. Mm. Dump it on the computer. No. Does it stink? Is it really bad? Sniffing it, getting the bouquet. Oh no! Do uh, I got? Do I got? I'm not come getting over? like too much spice coming off here. It kind is, of just is it like a cinnamon? Like, kind of just smells like a Mountain Dew, as you know, kind of Mountain Dews. Do I got to like come over to you here? Do I have to wander over? Well, I, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to drink it first, or yeah, if it's like too hot, I don't know if I'll try it. <laughs> we'll see. I'm coming over though. I'll put a little more in your, or a little less in your glass. Least, yeah, at least you can pour it. I do have my water ready too, just in case I need to like. Oh, it definitely burns my nose. I, I smelled that, and my nose, like, <laughs> smell it hard. Take a deep whiff. My nose is, like, tingling. <laughs> okay. yes. yeah, there it's is, bad. There is more that escaped oh my out God. of the, the bottle. Than, oh, my God. You know, us Minnesotans, it's, it's called like, a whole new pop for people who don't know. It's because we call soda pop here. If I you look at it, it's like fizzing. Like it's, like, it's like, oh, God. Uh, a little cloudy. Yeah, it looks like there's like specks in and it. And we got a. Uh... You can go All for right, it first. Here we go. Oh no. Yeah, there's definitely some spice to it. Like it's hot, hot. Should I try no, this? No, it'll stick with you a bit. All this right. also reminded me, I forgot that they made like flaming gushers. I do remember that. <laughs> I, think I actually I do remember. They, they, they were only the pink gushers. ones though, weren't they? Like the I red. think they were all strawberry ones. Or all right, whatever. I'm going to try it here. Oh, that aftertaste is kind of weird. Yeah, it hits that, like the back of your throat. Is. Yeah, it, it's not hot. No, it hits like the back of your throat. It's not like really on my tongue. It's like my tonsils area. It's kind of like weird. It's kind of well, maybe it's because I switched in your sinuses, my mouth maybe to make my my dentist love me. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think like the under flavor is kind of just general like dewish taste. Yeah, yes, yeah. You know, there's some spice to it. Definitely feels like a. Give me some heartburn <laughs> kind of thing, or at least going down your throat leaves like kind of a sensation of heartburn of just yeah. like spicy. It's it's not for me, but it's not as bad as I feared no, it to be. I, I don't no. know. Maybe this is a weird thing where like people will be into it to like mix drinks with or something. I could see that. Uh but for me, I'm happy I got a bottle, not a, a twelve pack. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe if I want to finish it with my dinner tonight. No. <laughs> maybe, maybe just stick to my Coca Cola. Yeah, it's 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 not it's <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not it's it's not our thing. I think my throat just got like a molecule breathing it in. Yeah, I was like I said, like if you more. sniff it, if you really like take like a if you inhale this stuff, it'll mess you up. I think worse than the than It'll the taste. Fuck you right <laughs> up, dog. <laughs> yeah, so not our thing, but you know, it's not. I wouldn't say don't try it. You know, if you like, you know, kind of weird things, give it a shot. Yeah, and if you have some weird different beverages that you maybe want yes. us to suggest us to have. And we'd be able to locate. You can write us at a whole new pod at gmail.com. Or I don't know, maybe comment on our YouTube make videos. Like an Amazon wish list. Oh, you yeah. Can send us stuff. No, that's uh, I'm not a porn star. So. <laughs> oh, not yet. Um, comment on the video. Uh, uh, tweet yeah. out our Twitter. YouTube.com slash a whole new pod. Great review us on different podcast platforms. Apple Podcasts, Google, Stitcher, all that jazz. Twitter, AWN pod on Twitter. And Follow Rate, subscribe, like. Yep, yeah, I got that. And uh, our birthdays are coming up here. Yes, we don't have the same birthday, but we're one day apart. May first, May second. So I, we'll have. We'll have been twenty nine by the time it's our birthday. Well, yeah, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so spicy. We're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. 